Good morning, here we are again. Um, this is going to be sort of a part two of Melvin's experience of having two strokes. Um, we've already discussed at great length his experience of having his first stroke, which was a, um, a mechanical stroke. So we're now going to speak to him regarding his second stroke, which again was an accident. It's not as if he is accident prone. Um, and that took place last year, 2020, at the start of COVID, possibly the wrong time to be admitted to hospital, but um, everything was very successful. So here we are with Melvin again. And first of all, I say I use the word because you like using the word of experience rather than a, a suffering from a stroke. Yeah, that's is true. Is that correct? Yeah, that it is. Yeah. It's, so it's an experience. Yeah. Um, this morning um, I was going to have a shower and uh, I went in the shower and then I noticed there wasn't a towel so I came out, I got a towel and then because I was rushing I slipped on a wet tile and I went flying and and I remember my head coming back onto the corner up on the sharp part of a tiled step and that was it you know and it I got cut right across the back of my neck and um but you being you decided that you would there was nothing wrong and you'd get up so I got up and then you said well, you're gonna have to go to um a and &E, which we proceeded to go to um and then I was in there for well, f Having... first of all, because it was COVID, um, oh, we, yeah. I did ring for an ambulance, but they were extremely busy. So we decided that we would take you up to the local hospital, uh, accident and emergency, and you were seen there. And you had several stitches, quite a few stitches in the back of your head. Yeah, six, I think. And then returning home, how did you feel? Well, I got on with things, didn't I? And because the weather was fabulous, wasn't it? And um, just get on with fiddling around with things and everything. And then suddenly you noticed that I was, my foot wasn't right or something. No, I think you had, you experienced headaches for about a week. Yeah, I had headaches and I felt that um, I was losing it a bit and um, can't remember. It's quite it's interesting, it tenses me up to think about this um, because I, can you remember what, and what then, you felt? And then because of, the, because of the headache, you decided to walk back to the hospital um, because you were suffering with the headaches and they checked you over and they um, monitored your heart which I think then put you into a panic. Well, I think what happened, I, I knocked my heart out of rhythm in the hit on my neck. And that, they, that, so I think we went up there the, the second time and they spotted this beat drop. And they said, oh, you're gonna have to go over to um, Gloucestershire for hosp the hospital. And we go, what? Yeah, so we got over there and then the preparation was going on in there for the this COVID virus, wasn't it? And yes, it was. It was really weird. They were building. They were building um, so the wards in the waiting room. Yeah, and they put all these plug things on my chest. That one of them didn't work, and then the next minute, I don't even remember. And then I'm in a bed in a ward, and. Um, I have to say the nurses were fabulous and the whole attention was fabulous. Uh, I watched, but then at this point you would ring me up and I go, oh, hi babes, um, uh, yeah, and that's all I could say. But I, 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 th I, think, I think first of all, we need to explain how you were admitted. Um, I took you back to Gloucester Hospital and I noticed that your foot was dropping your yeah. right foot was dropping yeah. so having experienced the first stroke i was aware that it could be a second stroke due to a bang on the head so once they had um diagnosed that it was a bleed on the brain due to the fall um you were then admitted um 
And also you were quite disorientated. Oh, yes. Extremely disorientated. Oh, I didn't know. So, and because of COVID-19, you were admitted and without visitors, it was a very strange experience yeah. because the hospital was actually like a ghost town, believe it or not. Yeah, and in front of me were there was these two guys, older guys, who were paralysed with strokes, can be lifted out on cranes and God knows what else. And I just watched all this going on. And um, and then I decided I, I had to go to the loo. So I, and then suddenly I couldn't really stand up. So I, I started as I did previously practice walking up and down the ward with very and uh, wobbling and hanging on to things and then this went on for a week and then I think we went on a camera didn't they they said you you, this you, is know, a, like, you went and had a CT scan yeah camera um, I had four of those and and actually you were in a, a, a week and yeah. because of the fall in the night um we did think that that would delay you coming home but I did have quite a struggle to get you home yeah because of course I was self-isolating because you were due to come home and and so the hospital the care there was extremely good it was uh just I didn't know whether I should wear a mask they said you know we've got a problem up here on the sixth floor and the virus it wasn't it was around the back of the hospital and so we we didn't this is all new stuff we didn't know anything about the virus and um but i i i i i looking back now i felt i'd had this dementia thing where my world became just in front of me and and my speech was so limited other than saying yes and no and um day in and day out, you know, and it just like, and then you were really fighting to get me out because you could see I was deteriorating in a different way. Well, I couldn't, I was aware because I couldn't see you. I was aware. So, so during your hospital stays, both with your first stroke and the second stroke, you were determined to build your strength up. You were also determined to see whether you could play guitar. That was during the hospital time and you'll be your first stroke and the second trip to hospital last year I did put in a bag some uh some <laughs> some pencils and paper for you to try and well and sketch maybe as yeah. you did with the first stroke but you had no the, intention you well you the bag didn't... was there and I didn't even know what it was and I, I I just opened it slightly and I thought I don't know what's in there and in fact I was still in my jeans four days in I, I didn't nobody told me to put pajamas on and because there's quite a uh, jack of lads coming I what are called um, entertaining people coming in uh, as a, a words of that effect and um, they were entertaining so I just laid there listening you know and um, I didn't I didn't know what was in the bag I didn't I wasn't interested in the bag I was in this world of like a dementia which, which was sort of my world became very sm small and my speech became very limited it, it was limited yeah and and so I think we'll stop there because I, I was also very concerned about the fact that I couldn't walk but I still yeah. didn't get that I didn't I didn't get it I think we'll stop because then we can cover the fact that that um possibly uh coming home was quite difficult because you were unable to walk yeah so we'll, we'll give it a pause and you can have a rest yeah okay thank okay. you thank you